talk a little bit about the creation, the, the idea, the conception of a foot, creating a football team here at Florida Tech. Well, uh, I've been at some pretty good football schools. Uh, as I mentioned, Miami and the University of Florida and Georgia Tech and Wisconsin. And uh, I've just come to believe that it is an intrinsic part of college life. It's part of American culture. And uh, as I said, I went to Rutgers, which, as you know, was the, the first intercollegiate football game ever played against Princeton. Rutgers won. So I've always had that tradition. My sons also played uh, football at Rutgers. So it's always been a great interest of ours. The need here is very unusual. Uh, I, I started a football program when I was at Florida Atlantic University yeah. as well. But here it was quite different. Here, this is a technological university. Half of our undergraduates major in engineering. So this was going to be uh, a little bit different than FAU. And we designed it that way. Uh, we designed this uh, as a program where our students were going to be students first and athletes second. Uh, and that's the basis of our recruiting. And we've done a phenomenal job in uh, this year's class. Now this is the first year since Coach Engelhart yes. uh, has been involved. We did have a class last year, a red shirt class as well. And that's the direction that we've given to the coach. Uh, find young men who are very smart, who are interested in the kinds of technology programs that Florida Tech offers, and also want to play football. Now part of that is our culture as a uh, nationally ranked um, research university, ranked in the top tier of U.S. News and World Report's rankings. Uh, we also have a tradition of athletics here. So to a certain extent, this is somewhat philosophical with me. Uh, a lot of people said, well, it's an engineering school. You'll never be able to have an athletics teams. And I argue, well, of course you can. So to a certain extent, we're out to prove something here. Uh, that we can take smart, technology-oriented young men and women and have them excel in athletics. Uh, we've proven we can do that in rowing. We've proven we can do that in soccer and baseball and women's golf. And now we want to develop that even further uh, with football, which some people still cynically will say that's not possible. Uh, we've still got people saying we're well, going to have to lower standards. We're not, and we haven't. Uh, I was delighted when the coach informed me last week that the average high school GPA of this year's class, recruited class, is 3.5, which is very good. Sure. Uh, so we've got some pretty smart kids. Now, uh, the coach also says, I think tongue-in-cheek, that we may not be as big and fast as some of the teams we play, but we're going to be smarter than them. And I kind of like that attitude as well. Okay. <laughs> Can you talk a little bit about what reaction you've experienced from the community when you said that you're going to create this program? What sort of things have you heard from the community? Uh, the best anecdote I can give you is over the Christmas break, I was going into Publix, and there was a fellow dressed up as Santa Claus in front of the Salvation Army bucket ringing the bell. So I thought, well, I'll put something in the bucket. And I went up there, and he said, well, thank you, Dr. Katniss. And I thought, cool, Santa Claus knows who I am. He said, well, I saw the schedule. It looks terrific. I said, what, what schedule is that, Santa? He said, your football schedule. I said, oh, yes, of course, of course. He said, you're going to play uh, North Alabama. Y you know, that's where Terry Bowden's the coach. I said, yeah, I knew that. He said, you're going to play Valdez to State. You know, they're the national champs. I said, yeah, I knew that. He said, and I understand there's some new teams at West Florida and New Orleans you're going to play. I said, yep, we're going to do that. And I thought, well, I guess I ought to tell them that we're probably going to be playing Stetson for the opener, uh, and we'll probably be playing uh, uh, Case Western for our homecoming. And then it dawned on me, what has happened to my life? I'm in a parking lot talking to Santa Claus about Florida Tech football. Where has my career gone? So I think that summarizes it. I cannot go into a Publix, a CVS, a uh, King Center without somebody wanting to talk about football. And I hear that same reaction 
amongst the other uh, leaders uh, of this university. Uh, it's taken the community by storm. And uh, that's wonderful because that tells me there's great community support. And maybe the bottom line is that I promised the board and the current students that I wasn't going to take this out of tuition. We we're going to go out and raise the money. And I knew we could do that in this community. And we have. We've raised $2.8 million from this community uh, to get our football program going. And uh, that will include a new uh, athletic training center, which we're going to build, a uh, practice field. Uh, and of course, uh, we, at first, we were not going to offer football scholarships. But once we got into this um, Gulf South conference, uh, it became apparent that we were, we're going to have to offer some scholarships. So we will eventually work up to the uh, Division II NCAA allotment of 36, and uh, we'll start that this year. So that, is, that has been a major, yeah, let's say, change in the original plan that it will be scholarship football. And a uh, uh, coach thinks that's very important for us to be competitive uh, in this very uh, competitive conference. Let, let me talk a little bit about the conference because that was another change too. One of the dilemmas we had was that there are no Division II football teams in Florida. So we were actually toying with the idea of going to NAIA and um, playing, uh, there are a few NAIA teams in Florida. Uh, but the more we looked into that, the more we realized Florida Tech is not an NAIA school, it's an NCAA school. So I guess we were fortunate that the Gulf South Conference approached us and said they'd be interested in talking to us about it. So I met with them, I was very impressed with the presidents in that conference, very impressed with the uh, commissioner, uh, Nathan Salant, and I thought, well, this has good points and bad points. Uh, uh, the good point is that this is the premier Division II football conference in the United States. I think they've won six out of the last ten national championships. So this is a very competitive conference. Uh, they also have um, um, well-known teams that I think will attract uh, people in our community, both here and when we play the away games. The bad news is <laughs> they're very good. And uh, so I talked to the coach about it. I said, is this what you really want to do? Do you really want to get into a conference that's going to be that competitive? And he said, yes, I do, because I think we can compete with them. It may take a while, but if we're going to do this, let's do it right, and let's get in the top D2 conference. So we did. And uh, that's going to be very exciting. And some of these teams, they're going to be something to behold because they are very, very good teams, and we're looking forward to that. Now, there are also, as I mentioned earlier, two new teams. University of West Florida in Pensacola is starting a team, and the University of New Orleans is starting a team, and they will also be in this football division uh, of the conference. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit, a little more specifically about what else the public can do to support your program? We're going to play initially at uh, Palm Bay High School. There are 6,500 seats in that stadium, and we would very much like to sell out every game. Uh, the first year, we will probably be playing probably five games at home. Uh, I'd love to see every game sold out. Uh, I think it would be an exciting addition to the very popular high school programs that exist now. Obviously, we're playing on Saturdays. Uh, the, th this conference does have a, a, a television network, and they play some games on Thursday nights. So we will have two games on Thursday nights. It's unclear whether they will be home or away games at this point. So obviously, people can look at those shows and hopefully local businesses will want to take ads on will those shows Will you be able well. to create, create additional monies to support the program? Do you mm. see, you know, sales of Florida Tech jerseys and things like that? Um, we'll do anything we can to uh, support the football program. We're, we're going to have many sponsorships opportunities. We've had an initial entry uh, that we call the Founders Club. 
So we limit it to 12 people, and it's, it costs $100,000 to be a member of the Founders Club, and we've sold all 12 Founders slots. Uh, that was a remarkable achievement. Yeah. Uh, we now have several other clubs, the President's Club, the Quarterback Club, at uh, lesser amounts. Uh, we've got opportunities for naming the training center, for naming the practice fields. We have a great partnership with Melbourne Central Catholic uh, for practice fields as well. Uh, so we might want to uh, tag along with them on some improvements to their uh, training facilities as well. Uh, we will indeed sell merchandise. Uh, we will indeed uh, sell any kind of paraphernalia or ephemeral uh, articles that we can. Uh, we are right now exploring game day opportunities for routine stuff like concessions, but maybe some innovative tailgating approaches we've been talking about. We think that might offer a new social sure. dimension as well. Uh, as with any football program at the college level, it's always a fundraising uh, opportunity, and we look forward to that.